Today, my teaching is cult pastors hate Schofield, legacy of weirdos. All right, cult pastors hate Schofield, legacy of weirdos. Okay, what did you mean by that, pastor? So there's a group of weirdos out there who hate dispensationalism. So what is dispensationalism? Dispensationalism, we believe that we rightly divide verses to the right group of people in the right time period. Because if you don't do that, then you're going to combine all the verses together and come up with major wrong doctrine. So it's common sense that you divide things at the right time period. Okay, if you don't believe me, then let me ask you a simple question. Do you stone somebody to death when they take God's name in vain? No, you don't. All right, we don't do that today <laughs> because all of us would be dead in this room. <laughs> How many of us have taken God's name in vain? Yeah, so we would all be dead. So uh, in that sense right here, we believe that that's a different time period in that verse when you take God's name in vain. Another thing right here is also where Jesus Christ mentioned that if you call your brother a fool, then you're in danger of hellfire. Well, I guess Jesus is in danger of hell because he called them fools. I guess Paul's in danger because he said fool. I guess the psalmist is in trouble because he said the fool has said in his heart there is no God. Or what is that referring to? That's a different time period. Jesus was talking about the context of the kingdom of the Jews on earth. Because one day at the future millennium, everyone, the lost people are cast into the lake of fire, and you got the good guys over there. Now, obviously, you don't want to call each other fools when they're trying to live right for God. So the thing is this, see, that's just common sense in rightly dividing verses. In fact, even your Bible itself is evidence, Old and New Testament. Yeah. That's, that's the case. So we believe in dispensationalism because of the Bible. Now, you notice I never mentioned Schofield here. I gave Bible. Yeah. But there are people who can't argue Bible, so they're these weird little groupies, you know. So a bunch of weird losers who are just discontent with the dispensational camp, the King James Bible issue, because they got more churches than they do. And so these guys, what they want to do is seek attention on YouTube because that's the only way they can ever seek attention. So these guys, they're going to pretend to be independent, fundamental, Baptist King James only. Right. They're going to be like that, and they're going to paste it all over on their sites, on their videos, so that they can fool you that I'm a part of you. That's right. I'm going to tell you something. They are not a part of us. Amen. Those people are nothing but a bunch of weird little cults. Yep. That's what they are. They want to get their own little following. They critique everybody that they can find. and then they, Because why? They want to make themselves like they're the real deal. Yep. That's what they want to do. So a bunch of these weird losers, because they can't attack dispensationalism, they instead attack Schofield. You know? That's the coward's way of doing it. Okay? You know why that's a coward's way of doing it? Because if everybody did the same thing with your life, all right, what kind of things do you have in your life, huh? Oh, I have nothing to hide, Pastor. Oh, really, really? You, you, want, you want a camera to record every instance what you do in the home, man? <laughs> so here's the thing right here, is that if those guys are also given that kind of burden like Schofield was, in that kind of interrogation, those guys would have a lot of skeletons in their closets, too. Because... Look at every saint in the Bible. How many times were their sins recorded? Okay, so that's a loser's way of dismantling truth. How you dismantle truth is the source, right? The source. How many times did you hear me say that in today's teaching, remember? They like to attack the person, not the source. That's what the liberal news media does. They like to attack the person, not the source. This guy didn't graduate from this kind of university. This guy, he didn't do well in school. This guy, blah, 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 blah. He does nothing at home but just post videos and social stuff on the network, blah, 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 blah. All right? Okay, they, I'm not denying that that's a factor to consider in their argument. But it's just a factor. If you want to convince me, you've got to attack the source. Because you can attack anybody's life. Now, here's the thing right here is that what they do with Schofield is that this is so crooked. So they would talk about his past where he was a crooked lawyer and that he was also a drunk and that he abandoned his wife and children. But you've got to understand this. He was a wicked sinner before he got saved. So because of his drinking days, if you read Schofield's biography, okay, because of his drinking days, he abandoned his wife and children because of his drinking. So he was a wicked sinner. But then what happened was, there was this man who actually confronted him, and then he says that, uh, I'm just wondering why you won't become a Christian. And you know what Schofield say? He said this, well, I'm a drunkard, and I read some, and I think you Christians teach drunkards can't go to heaven, right? 
And then the guy, he responded this. I did ask you about that. I asked you, why aren't you a safe Christian? So see, Schofield knew about his drinking thing. But that man, he showed him the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, convicted him about that. And then because of that, Schofield, he repented and he got saved in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now what happened? Because of the big, great damage that he'd done with his past life, with his wife and children, his wife did the divorce. So his wife did the divorce, and you can't, and what can Schofield do about that? Because he's already da da done so much damage to the wife and to the child. Here's another thing. We don't know all the details of what happened right there. All we know is that because of his drinking incident, he abandoned his wife and children. But that was because he was a wicked sinner that time. And then when he got saved in the Lord Jesus Christ, you're not saying that God can change a man's life around after that? So that is just so weird right there. So these people, they would like to bring up the past. I would like to bring up your past before you got saved in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. How many of you want to raise your hand and tell, tell us all the crud that you've done back then? Some of you told me about the things you did in your life, Come on. and I don't want to even say it on YouTube. <laughs> all right? But it's really wicked. Paul even said sins that you... Is, it's a shame to even speak of. That's what Paul said. So here's the thing is that sometimes people can be very inconsiderate about the complications that people went through with divorce, especially people who just got saved and became saved Christians. Can I tell you something? You've got no right to judge them in such cases. You don't have any right to dig up all the dirt in their life and show all the complicated details. I mean, some of you, there are some Christian, there are many Christians I know online who suffered the consequences of divorce and they repented, they got right. Other people, they couldn't help but divorce because they were getting abused by their husbands, okay? You don't know all the details and the complications those people go through in their lives and it's so sad how pastors just bash them on the head, especially these weirdo pastors, cult pastors you should watch out for, that just bash people about that when you don't know the details of what they went through in their divorce. That's right. None of your business, man. None of your business. You should lay off. Amen. You especially have no right to go to the graveyards of Schofield's wife and daughter just to rub dirt on his divorce issue. Really, Pastor? Yeah, there are some of these weirdo losers that do that. They would go to the grave of his wife and daughter that Schofield abandoned just to make a point. You bunch of wicked, God-forsaken scoundrels, you. You bunch of wicked people. Sometimes liberals can be better people than you do. This is just wicked, man. And these are people I'm talking about. See, I'm kicking my own camp, too. I'm not just kicking liberals, I'm kicking my own camp. The, I'm talking about independent, fundamental, Baptist, KJV only people. Man, pastor, you're gonna get smaller after this. Welcome to my church, see? I told you, man, you're gonna get in or you're gonna get out. We don't hide the truth Amen. here. Amen. We don't hide the truth here. You see why I'm so unpopular. Okay, so you see right here, there's a book called The Life of C.I. Schofield, pages 27 to 29. That gives exact detail and evidence that Schofield, he was actually witnessed by this person. I think his first name is Tom. But you can look at that uh, book, and in that book, it gives documented detail, page 27 to 29, there's a witness. The guy's name is Tom, he actually led him to Christ Jesus. But not only that, there's another witness to back up that witness. Because this witness later on told the author who was writing the book, that sounds like Tom, how he would do so many. He exactly talked like that. He was a personal and close friend of him. So this was a real life situation and case. Now here's another one that, where they would bring up Schofield. So how they attack Schofield is that they would get on his past. So they would attack his past. And not only that, they would attack him correcting the King James Bible. <gasps> oh my goodness, you might as well throw Schofield out, man, because he corrected your King James Bible. Again, I don't care what he did. What am I concerned about? The source. The source with Schofield is not the King James Bible issue. He's my last man to put on that. Right. All right? He was a KJB critic. You know what? You know what I appreciate him for? Dispensationalism. That's it. And maybe that's the only thing he's good for. Okay? Maybe that's the only thing he's good for either. Okay, you can bring up. I don't care what kind of dirt you. Uh, I don't care what kind of dirt you bring up about him. All right, 
All I'm doing is I'm not going by Schofield. I'm going by the source. What is it the person taught, teach, the source, the evidence? Dispensationalism, there are too many evidences. If you don't believe me, you can look at my 100 and something videos on dispensationalism. I even have a playlist for that one. By the way, these idiots who profess themselves to be KJV people, and they think they can scare KJV only people by saying, well, you know, Schofield was a KJV critic. So you know what? You shouldn't listen to Schofield. Those idiots, didn't they know that the KJV translators even put footnotes in their King James Bible to give alternate meanings and alternate translations for the word? Oh, oh. Didn't you know the KJV translators did that? So it's, so it's so funny, right? Here's another thing. Some of these guys, these weird losers, they like to emphasize Jack Hiles, Jack Hiles. Uh -huh. Now, Jack Hiles, I know the Lord mightily used him. So he's like Schofield, OK? God used both of those men for some reason. But I'm going to tell you something. You can dig up more dirt on Hiles than Schofield, all right, all right, OK? You can dig up more dirt on Hiles than Schofield, all right? Especially ask his family, his family members. <laughs> all right, that's all I'm going to say, OK? Some of you know what I'm talking about. But here's the thing is that even Jack Hiles, uh, he corrected the King James Bible. Didn't you know that? Yeah. No, he didn't. He stood up for the King James Bible. Yeah, he switched. Yeah. But before, he heavily criticized the King James Bible. I, I, all you have to do is look at his old books. I have documentations where he corrected the King James Bible, and he even criticized the KJV translators as baby sprinkling Episcopalians. Oh, wow. So now you're, you got your KJV translators and Hiles got a problem. So we might as well throw away our King James Bible folks, you know? Didn't you know some of them were Calvinists too, the KJV translators? Yeah. Oh my goodness, we, we should reject the King James Bible then. See, it shows your final authority is men, yeah. not the evidence that God is showing to you. Hmm. How about that? If you judge any work by any man of God from back then till now, I'm going to tell you something, folks, including myself, all right? You can pick the faults of Gene Kim, all right? You can sure do that, too. I'm going to tell you something. All of us are nothing but sinners, and then when you find stuff to nitpick and critique, you got nothing to believe in then, That's right. if you think that we're the ones giving you the truth. Yeah. You, you're looking at Jesus Christ, what he's telling you, what he's teaching you. That's what you've got to be looking at. Now, one, here's probably the, uh, the, the, uh, the most legitimate criticism on Schofield. So I'm going to give the most legitimate one. See, I'm covering all bases, see? These guys are probably too lazy not to even pull up documentations, these guys. Anyways, another thing is that he was connected with the Lotus Club. And you might say, what in the world is that? Why is that bad? Because uh, they think that... Because a lot of people, they're into conspiracies. They are, they're all against the elites and the Illuminati, right? Amen. So then what they try to do is they try to connect Schofield to the Illuminati. They're like, why in the world they could do that? Because Schofield, he was part of the Lotus Club. And the Lotus Club, they had members who are connected with all these, uh, with all these elites. So by doing that, they think they can make you think that dispensationalism came from the Illuminati. <laughs> Now, you see the fallacy of that argument? The fallacy is not, uh, the fallacy is, it's not dispensationalism, it's Schofield, okay? It's Schofield. Here's another thing right here. I guarantee you this, people who pulled this up about the Lotus Club, all of them know this guy. This guy is the most heavy biographer of Schofield who critiqued him. The most thorough Schofield biographer and critic. His name is Joseph Canfield. That's where they get their sources from. Now, Joseph Canfield, I'm going to give you, see, I'm giving you sources here, even from your best source. Here's what he said. The club's purpose, the Lotus Club, was this. The primary object of this club is to control all the world through Freemasonry and Catholicism, and I just made all that up. You think that the Lotus Club is going to advertise that like a giveaway? We're the Illuminati. Join us. <laughs> That's not how you fool people. How you fool people is you disguise yourself with your purpose of what the club is, and you're hiding your real intention. That's how you deceive people, 
Okay, the primary object of this club shall be to promote social intercourse among journalists, artists, and members of the musical and dramatic professions, and representatives, amateurs, and friends of literature, science, and the fine arts. That's the purpose of the Lotus Club. Now, use some common sense here. Why do you think Schofield would join that Lotus Club? Because, now think about this. They're arguing that because of the Lotus Club and, then, uh, and the connections of the Lotus Club, his Schofield reference Bible got more popularized. Well, yeah, no kidding. You know why? Because Schofield wanted to popularize his reference Bible, so he wanted to go to some prestigious club that talked about works and journals so that he can gain more attention. That's what he was doing. But here's another thing. Okay, let me explain even more if this is, a, if this is not uh, convincing enough. This is Canfield, the heaviest critic of Schofield. It defies understanding that an obscure pastor from the hinterlands whose literary output up to 1901 consisted of very sectarian booklets, articles, and courses would be considered acceptable in the Lotus Club. Indications are that had Reed or Samuel Untermeyer seen any of Schofield's works, they would have reacted with raucous laughter. Schofield kept up his membership in Lotus until his death in 1921. And then he reveals right here, the membership was not referred to in any obituary or eulogy. The dispensational community knew nothing of it. The club was given as Schofield's re residence in 1912 in Who's Who in America. The 1905 le letter to Gabeline was written on the Lotus Club stationery. Now what's really hilarious is this, Canfield, he was attacking the dispensationalist community right here. But he himself confessed right here that if the Lotus Club or the Illuminati members actually looked at Schofield's works, they would have laughed it off. You know why? Because if you actually read Schofield's work, who in their right mind want to expose you know, the Genesis Gap issue of Satan's plan and his kingdom? Who want to expose the idea about the words of God, about Satan building up his kingdom? Who would, want to expose all, who would want to expose the word of God that can jeopardize the Illuminati? Why would the Illuminati want that? See, that's not what the Illuminati... So you can see right here, this is the point. So I'm going to explain a little bit more, then everything will connect. Quote, Canfield again. The political life into which young district attorney Schofield now found himself plunged by virtue of his federal office and work involved frequent trips from Kansas to Washington and associations and activities that were not entirely to his liking. The profession of law was his life choice. His political work was interfering with that. So this was written by a person who connected himself with Schofield and is a biographer. It's called The Life of Schofield. So this is pretty obvious when you connect the dots. Schofield, remember, he had political backings as a lawyer. Now, have you been a lawyer before? If you're a lawyer, you know what, what happens? You do make connections. That's what lawyers do. They automatically have connections with big shots, with political leaders. And don't tell me when you make connections with government leaders, you're not going to bump into a Freemason somewhere. You're not going to bump into an elite somewhere. See, that's life. I bet you the jobs that you're working at, you know, some of you people, are connected somehow with some elite right there. That doesn't mean that you who's working under that guy knows anything about it or you're deliberately trying to be part of the Illuminati scheme. No, you gotta understand this. The Illuminati has a different agenda. If Schofield was part of the Illuminati, why in the world would the Illuminati want to, sco want to support Schofield's work that promote the word of God and shatter their beliefs. As Schofield's critic would say, they would have laughed it, off, laughed it off. And I'm talking about the heaviest critic of Schofield that I read. There's no doubt Schofield, he's a saved Christian who isn't part of the Illuminati because that was proven by biographical works that I quoted and gave instant. Now here's the issue though, okay? This makes sense. The only thing Schofield was wrong was that he wanted to fellowship with the prestigious. Why? To promote his work. That's where he was wrong. Unknowingly to him, the Illuminati used his fellowship to promote their Jewish agenda. That would make more sense right there. Maybe Schofield was wrong, but we don't know the exact details. He probably, you gotta consider this fact. If you're not going, don't be biased. If you're going to be an objective person, you've got to look at all the facts right here. 
And I've weighed the evidences right here, and I'm going to give this thing to consider. You got to consider at least this point. Don't be one-sided. You also have to be open-minded and consider the fact he probably just wanted to hang out with prestigious people. And maybe, maybe, if they published his reference Bible, he could use that to somehow open their eyes to biblical truths. Because if you don't realize that, there are sometimes Bible-believing preachers and people who do that. They would take opportunity. If someone, think about it, if someone took an opportunity where Amazon or Facebook or, or YouTube, which you guys are doing anyway right now, and you're all hypocritical for doing that. Those guys are part of the elite, elitist agenda too. Yeah. If they've given you a platform and an opportunity to promote your work, wouldn't you gladly take that? Yeah. yeah, of course. That's just common sense. But here's the greatest evidence is Jesus. Look at Luke chapter 7. You know who he was? He fellowshiped with Jewish leaders. And their religion of Judaism is the birthplace of all conspiracies today, including the Jewish elites. But Jesus fellowshiped with them. Do you know why? No, he, because he wasn't part of the Jewish agenda. What he wanted to do was that he wanted to fellowship because maybe he can show them through his testimony of what's right and maybe get them saved. Oh, no, I don't believe that. Didn't he do that with Nicodemus? John chapter 3, verse 1 through 3. What about another one right here? Luke chapter 7, verse 34 through 36. So I have to wrap this up. But look at verse 34 through 36. See, Jesus Christ fellowshipping with, with publican sinners and even a Pharisee. Why? So that he could probably even lead them to Christ one day. That's what that verse shows. Another one is Luke chapter 11, verse 37. If that's not enough, look at Luke chapter uh, 14 and verse 1 as well. Those are cases, multiple cases, where Jesus fellowshiped with Jewish leaders of the conspiracy because they conspired to kill him. Isn't that something? And Jesus knew that. By the way, let's close it off right here. I think this should be the most convincing thing. If you compare the sins of people in the Bible compared to Schofield, you would realize that God used them nevertheless, and you still accept them. Yeah, why won't you do it with Schofield? Think about Abraham. He lied about his wife so that those kings could marry his wife. He abandoned. You taught, that's not just abandoning. That's just giving up your wife for somebody else to marry. That's Abraham. Here's another one. Jonah, he wanted the whole city to perish. He didn't care. And God said, what about those little babies who can't tell their right hand from the left? Well, I think that's really cruel, man. And you read his book. What about Samson, who fornicated with many prostitutes? He did not just sleep with two women like Schofield. Oh, the horror, man, of just two women, you know? Samson fornicated, and he committed suicide, too. Yet he's mentioned in the Heroes of Faith, Hebrews 11. Uh, what, about, uh, what about right here, uh, blah, 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 Solomon. What about Solomon right here? He married many wicked women, like a thousand wives, okay? What, that's 500 times Schofield, you know? <laughs> and yet you read four of his books? Uh -huh. By the way, he's called a preacher. Shouldn't he be disqualified for the ministry? Oh, the <laughs> forbidden horror, you know? What about that? What about that? Not only that, he compromised with different gods, multiple kingdoms, not just one little lotus club, okay? It was some branch of a branch of a branch of the, the main Illuminati, okay? Solomon compromised with different nations and kings who worshiped and bowed down to false idols, and that was publicly known, okay? It wasn't like hidden, like some lotus club. We're, we just want to talk about secular works right here. Crying out loud. Not only that, Jehoshaphat, don't we talk great about him and his story in the Bible about how he praised the Lord and how he was able to conquer kings? But he did two compromises with two kings and nations. Schofield did it with this Lotus Club. But Jehoshaphat did tw two compromises with two wicked kings. And guess what? There's no record of them repenting. There's not even record of them repenting. Yet we still talk about how God used them and don't reject their writings. These bunch of people, they're very weird people attacking somebody's life because that's the only thing they're good at right. is YouTubing somebody's life, Amen. trolling somebody's life, looking up through social networks and anything on the internet to attack somebody's life. That's literally a weirdo. Yeah. You have no life, man. Yeah. Amen. Give me Bible. Give me Bible. Give me Bible. You know what the most embarrassing thing for me today was? Is that I had to, 
I could not teach you Bible today to address your dispensationalism arguments. I had to talk about somebody's life right here. All right? What, what a dumb, stupid thing, man. What a dumb, stupid thing. That's not why I believe in dispensationalism. I believe in dispensationalism because of the word of God. Give me a verse, man.